out of it, whereas there's just some games which are like totally broken and like the mechanics don't even work. Like, uh, what's what's the, the the NES game that I'm thinking of that was incomplete? Like, uh, Cats, something, Cheetah Man, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and people are like, no, that game was actually somewhat good. It's like, you think that was better than E.T.? E.T. was actually a functional game. So, yes, yeah, E.T. I actually got think... someone, like that guy who like, actually finished the game. He did what, like a Kickstarter. Well, there's something who actually finished COVID, Cheetah Man 2? Yeah, well, there was a guy who like put together a crowdfunding campaign so you could actually like make Beat it into a functioning it. game. Yeah, I want so to see this just now. Break. Yeah, you should look into that. It was at like the second year of Con Rubble, the guy was like, uh, like selling it. I was like, they didn't improve the game, they just made it possible to beat it. What game was this? Uh, Cheetah Man 2. Oh. Have you ever heard of Action 52? There's a game on it called Cheetah Man. They made a sequel to that that was a complete crippled mess. That I know it was sweet granted. It's it's one of those games where like you get to a certain point in like the actual game and it doesn't let you get any further. It's like it won't. The the only game that I can even think of that it's even, unstable. Yeah, it's it just it breaks right. Like the there's only one that I know that is more recent. Uh, was do you remember uh, Turok Rage Wars? <laughs> On the N64, oh, there, right, there's right. there's two different versions, and one is like extremely expensive because it's so rare. There there's a black cartridge version which exists, which is the normal retail. And if you play multiplayer and you get to a certain point of the game to get to a boss, it literally does not know to sequence it to the next scene. So the game is is completely unplayable in multiplayer. <laughs> but the gray one, they fixed it, and almost nobody has it. So it's like, like, I've not quite seen too many games that actually have that problem with so like bootleg. So like, Action 52 is, I think it's considered like a bootleg. Yeah. Kind of, but not really. Yeah. yeah. Technical terms, yes. Yeah. But in other sense, not really, because they kind of officially yeah. released it. It's not like licensed by Nintendo. Yeah, kind not of thing, quite, right? but it's like third party. Which is like, there's a whole plethora of NES games that are like that, though. Yeah, like the Tank and... Yeah, oh, yeah stuff games. like that, or uh, what was it, Bible games? Oh god, oh, yeah. yeah, the Bible Jesus. games. <laughs> By the way, going back to E.T., I did play it. it. I don't want to say it was good, but it wasn't that bad. Yeah. I just kind of found it like, charming and a really... For the Atari game, it was okay. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's okay for the technological limitations. It's not the most fun thing, but there are certainly worse things. It wasn't the worst thing that I was told about. It's like, you prefer to get that much. Yeah, like, they built so much hype. When I go into there, it's just like, oh. That was just all air. And it's like a bottle. Like there's only this much water in it, and but they make it sound like there's like a ton of it. Anyways, so. it's like a disappointing bag of chips. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Yeah, but every in a way, like every bag is kind of disappointing. Though. Yeah, they're all only half full. Yeah, same with like protein powder. They always like leave this much space of air. It's like great. Right, like cat. 50 You know why they actually this. do that? I, found, I actually figured this out. You know why they actually do that? It's like an air bag for them for whenever they're transporting it so that things don't break apart. Yeah. I usually get so curious until I found that out. I'm like, I really would rather not have chip dust at the bottom of this bag. Yeah, that makes sense. Once you find the reason, it's always a reason. It might not be a good reason, but you're like, eh, okay, I can, I can give. Accept it. Okay, what maybe. game were you guys talking about? I missed it. Oh, we were talking about how, like, uh, yeah, chips, were <laughs> chips were disappointing and how, like, hype builds up that, like, invisible. Oh, okay. Like, this, this is a terrible game, right? This is a yeah. terrible bag of chips. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, I probably, we probably don't need this. Okay? No, we're we're I don't think we're good with We're in a small room. room. Um, I think that... You guys have back in here, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. cool. Sweet. Sweet. I think it'd be a good idea for us to maybe even, like, open up the Q&A now. Um, just if anybody has any questions, and we can kind of branch yeah. through all of that. Anything yeah. about, like, reviews, any games we might want to talk about? How to do them, that, what, what equipment you want. Yeah. Any games you think we should cover? What's that? No man's oh, when it goes down in price. <laughs> when it goes when down it goes in price. price. But then again, that's already the review. It's not worth the money that they set up. I'll just rent it from work. Oh wait, yeah. no. No, I got a better <laughs> alternative. I got, a, I got a better alternative for No Man's Sky. You, uh, anyone heard of the game called Subnautica? Yeah. 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 What about uh, Osiris? Oh, uh, I heard of that, but I don't like remember the details about it's it. It's like New Landing or something. Osiris New Landing. It's, it's, uh, the Ox cast right now is uh, covering it. It looks like so much fun. It looks better than No Man's Sky. Yeah. No, no Man's Sky was really disappointed with, with one particular thing. Like, put aside everything that they quote unquote falsely advertised, I won't get into that whole story, but the one thing that killed it for me 
was the fact that they said they have zero interest in multiplayer games. And making like a multiplayer, sorry, aspect to that game. And I was like, that ruined it for like 70% of the market because especially like, when you look at a game that is so open like that one where it's like you can go and explore. You want you, to share it. You want to share that experience with so many other people. One of the games that I played the crap out of and I love it so much uh, is Elite Dangerous. Uh, very similar to the same vein of uh, Star Citizen Online. These games really encourage like the gigantic galactic kind of feel, but they also encourage that that you know that sharing of that experience because then you can play with other people, get into like squad, like squadrons and stuff like that. Wait, I have a question. So you played so, No Man's Sky, and I actually haven't played No Man's Sky, but I've played Elite Dangerous, and I've, I've seen enough on uh, Star Citizen. Okay, so who, uh, who's played it? Because I have a question. I I I give up all hope on playing. Oh, okay, because, okay, this is what I heard from someone, that there are, like, traders that you can, like, go to to do, like, bargaining in the game. Yeah. I thought the game was called No Man's Sky, so why well, do they no, exist? Well, there's no, apparently you're, uh, there are you're human. Well, I guess they should have said No Sentient Life Sky. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's better than No Man's Sky. No. There's, like, the huge dispute going on right now. There's, like, a ransom on something. Oh, my God. Yeah, With, like, 75,000. Oh, no, no, right, it's a media table. <laughs> Um, when, when, it, um, when it comes to EVE Online, the only thing that I was like really disappointed with that game was like, don't get me wrong, it's a good game, but not for me, is I like being the person who's in the cockpit of the ship and controlling every little of my new movement, yeah. but that's the kind of play style that I like, that's why I like Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen Online. I think you really like Subnautica because there's a submarine you can build, and yep. it's so cool. Now they have a map. I, I don't know. That was the coolest part too, and the I, I, I'm, I'm still saving up to get it. I'm going to try and take a look at some reviews on uh, Subnautica because I'd really love to see a little bit more on it. Watch seen... Markiplier's videos. I, I'm just going to say, like, I've seen, like, Markiplier's been playing it, a few other people that... I've been streaming it a lot and, like, I'm grabbing all the stuff and it's just okay. so immersive. I'm going to have to stop in then because, like, I, I know nothing about the game. The less you know, the better because it's yeah. more exciting. Because someone on the stream, like, told me where, like, one of the locations was and I was like... Well, well I don't, there goes I don't, fun. Yeah, I don't feel... <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel like, yes, I found it, even though it was set up, but it was... Spoilers are terrible. I should probably ask you, either do you two know anything about Elite Dangerous at all? Um, my coworker has told me all about it, and I've never played. Anyone here know the, the, just the, at least the name of the yes. game Elite Dangerous? Just okay. the name. I have no it's, it's the new re rendition of a game, for those of you who don't know, it's the new rendition of a game that came out in the 70s, uh, just titled simply Elite. Uh, Elite Dangerous is basically the envisionment of what they wanted to do with the technology that's available now. To put in perspective how large this game is, it is the largest game in current existence, period. 400 billion star systems to explore. But I imagine it's play? kind of, no. I imagine it's like, not heavy, it's just like simplistic graphics, but it's like, you know, there's a lot more it's uh, quantity they, than... What they've done is, they've made the promises set forward that they want to actually introduce more and more and more of the game to make it even more of an immersive experience, which they've done a very good job with. Uh, the first thing that they said was, okay, we get it, you guys can't get out of your ships. What if we make an expansion called Horizons, you can get out on the Land Rover and start actually traversing the terrain. The terrain is very basic, but you can also now battle other people in other rovers. Okay, and that suddenly just skyrocketed into an another level of, of sighting, so people were like, I can get out of my ship now. And the other two things that they want to do next, that they've said they have, and they've been pretty good about fulfilling their promises, is leaving the ship and walking on foot across a space station, and these things are huge. Like, when, you, when, you're, when you're pulling into the dock, I can't even begin to describe the feeling of insignificance you have to this, the mass of this object. Like, it's, it's pretty much like the stereotypical scene in Star Wars where they're like going up to the Death Star setting. That's like, that's like a, that's a moon, right? No, that's, that's a space station, right? And then when they pull up to it, you see how grand in scale this thing is. Like, the, it's just, ah, oh, I can't. Okay, if you guys, I'm assuming everyone here has watched Markiplier's videos. Okay, it's pretty much, that's exactly how I am in that game. Just, oh, space! Like, every five seconds is just so beautiful. Oh, it makes me want to boot up Subnautica now, hearing that. Because docking into your base, once you build like yeah. this thing called a moon pool where you put yeah. your your uh, vehicles, your submersibles in, it's just so cool because it's like... <laughs> and you get to upgrade in there, it's just like, so cool. But I've done everything in the game at the moment, so it's like, God, I 
I just do base building. It's, it's a really good game to check out, and one of the things that I love that a lot of streamers do is, because I actually do this too, they put a, a, a program attached to it. I look for the most immersive game experiences that I can, so this just goes for like all games. So with Elite, I've actually got a voice recognition piece of software where I can voice out to my computer and she will do what I ask her to. Or try to kill me, depending on how she's feeling that day. <laughs> So like I'll ask her stupid questions like Sammy, tell me a joke, and she'll say a man walks into a bar and a table and a chair, and I'll ask her for another joke, and she'll say that she's got the heart of a lion in the lifetime band from the zoo. So it's like really stupid, quirky stuff like that. Uh, and like I'll tell her, you know, jump warp, and she'll say like, really, are we running away again? Stupid stuff like that. Like she gives me a lot of crap, but I find it's like really interesting. She's sassy. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Like she's she, she's really she's a sassy gal, and she has tried to get me killed many times like Or like from uh, like Lousy. Basically, yeah. <laughs> Except she actually knows that if I die, that she's going to. So she kind of like she'll she'll pressure me to almost be killed, and I and I hate her so much for it. So, so, so if you die, you're done. Well, here, the thing is, uh, like I think uh, you said you play Eve, right? It, there's like an insurance policy. Like if your ship blows up, you go and it's the same idea. You you pay an insurance amount, you can get your ship and all your stuff back. But like your cargo's gone. And so what if you have no money to pay that off? <laughs> you start in a sidewinder, one of the crappiest ships in the game. But you still have the same guys, right? Uh, yeah, I do. Well, because like it's an exterior program. I just Next put it in there for GTA in space. Yeah. Oh, GTA in space. Oh, I would love to actually see that. Does anyone have any questions or anything? So for anyone who didn't hear, the question was like, maybe what, what kind give, of... Maybe we should give the mic to the audience. Yeah, maybe. That's <laughs> yeah. So the question was about like capture cards and software that we use to actually like capture game footage to share with an audience. Mm -hmm. Or to use for a video. Sure. Um, I find that uh, the whole pod HDPR rocket has worked really well because it's very... Um, it's very simplistic, yeah, you can use a flash drive as your source of memory, which is very helpful, so you don't have to worry about using your computer as well. It can be a little bit of an issue. It doesn't really work together with streaming, like let's say an old auto would. There the is thing. a streaming function on it, but then you lose the customization on it. Mm, see, I didn't but, know there was but it's only on the computer. Okay. Still, I like the uh, the portable nature of it. I think it's really good. Um, for actual streaming, I use OBS. Uh, I find that the like once you get the settings all like configured, I find it so easy to work with. I find that it offers everything I need a gamer to be able to set everything up, and it's great because like the moment I boot it up, it's it's already set up there for me. Um, it, I think it's more about like the layout too when you're doing things like streams. Like it's nice having a dual monitor set up. Yeah. That's, I, I know too many people use like one and I'm like, oh my god. I, I <laughs> used to do that. It would be a nightmare if you only used one monitor I, I, I or used something to do that, like that. And I regret it every oh minute of it. By using a dual monitor? <laughs> using a singular monitor. Oh. However, in my defense, it was a 32 inch. Yeah. No, see, that's different. <laughs> I have a light. But, but things got pixelated so fast. Yeah. Because, like, you're this close to it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's the moment where you realize, no, I'm desperate. You go and get a sh really shitty 4x3 monitor that you dug up from the basement. You're like, I'm just going to deal. Yeah. <laughs> What's the problem with using a, a single monitor? Yeah. It gets very cluttered very fast. So, uh, give me a representation. Like, you got one screen here, you got the yeah, yeah, gameplay here, just too you much got going chat. On. You're just all in this one screen. You kind of want to like, yeah. spread out. Can focus on the game, um, and then you could have another one for the chat thread so you can answer people. And you know, OBS is just like chilling over there, too. So it's like it's good to kind of separate it's, it. It's out. very cluttered. Like, uh, say if you play a game full screen and you're streaming it, right? Someone toss in the chat. Oh, got an alt tab and be like, oh, yeah, uh, and respond to it. Then you well, got to run your phone right next to it, which you're going to be drinking the battery. Right? Yeah, that too. But, but long story short, dual monitors like really help give you more space. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, the, the the biggest thing is is just like simple answer. It's clutter. You you have like what I have in my setup is I'll have OBS, I'll have whatever I'm playing, uh, I'll have the chat open, and then I'll also have an alert system. So like whenever anyone makes like a donation or follows the stream or anything like that. Oh, uh, that one. It's like to, uh, to, so you, can, you can have a thing built into OBS to just be like to tell you. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna have to think. Really? About so, 
potential learning. So on, on, on the expanding on the dual monitors, uh, say video game editing. When you have an editing screen, you want to see everything. You want it all to be the max size, right? You don't want to be in this small one to be like, yeah. Or anything. So you have one screen where it's like you're editing in. On the other hand, the other screen, you have your folder where it's like grab this, throw here, grab this. Instead of being like flip back and forth, flip back and forth. So dual monitors are really helpful if you're uh, doing that type of stuff. One, one thing I'll put a disclaimer out there for is that if you're just starting and you want to just do a stream, it doesn't matter if you have one or two monitors, you can still make it work. Uh, you can. Uh, <laughs> it's just more helpful that. Yeah, you can run games in. Yeah, you can you can run games in windowed mode just so you can get the point across, and then you can have just like the chat. You don't need like all the other fancy stuff. Although I feel like it helps like the notifications and all that. But if you realistically just want to do it, you don't have to go very complex. I will agree on the OBS note. I used to use what was the other? Xsplit. Yes, that I, was. I used to use Xsplit, and I, what I'll there, there's pros and cons here. The uh, using Xsplit is really easy for anyone who knows nothing about this type of software. OBS, I had to kind of look stuff up that wasn't really like apparent, like one thing was like changing the size of stuff that wasn't uniform. I didn't realize you had to hold it. Oh, oh yeah, like certain commands on. Yeah, so like you do have to do a little bit of research, but once you've gotten through that learning process, it's, it's so much more flexible and it's all open source. So it's consistently being upgraded, whereas x Customized. Yeah, you can have an infinite amount of different scenes, so I can do like an AMK screen, a, uh, an actual gaming screen for like various different types of games. I can from well, when I say customize, I meant like, you know that whole thing, the James whole the alert thing about the nation stuff? Yeah. yeah. You can have like a, a codec that's placed in OBS and then it'll just pop up on your OBS whenever anything happens. Yeah. I save so much space by doing that. That's really good to know. Because I used to have to look into that. I know, that's but that's, that's, that's actually like, it's, it's a good question to ask because I didn't like So is OBS a software though? Yes. yes. Oh, it's, it's actually called OBS, Open Broadcast Software. Okay. It's completely it's free, free, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like, very good. And if you ever get lost in the Odyssey, there's so many well, really good like YouTube tutorials on how to get your things set up. For the uh, first question. Uh, oh, so, yeah. sorry, do you like it? Yeah, I'm like the last one to answer your question. Uh, also, uh, the, after this, we'll get to this job and you're saying it's after him as well. Uh, also, um, is it impractical to stream off laptops? Because it sounds like you guys have to stream off an iPod? Laptop? 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 Like, oh, you no. just stream off an iPod? Wow, that would be really interesting. Like, if you could, I would have your internet connected to your laptop for sure. Oh, I, yeah. Um, I always do. I'm always like fully connected on there. I've never done it on a laptop before. I guess it really depends on um, you know what your build is like, um, how strong it is, what's processing. Yeah, so what like you're actually streaming. Yeah, it does really matter. Because like I find I drop frames occasionally with playing with the being dangerous because like it's a pretty intense game. But then I'll go and play something like Hearthstone and you get like no drop whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, like uh, streaming on a laptop, it's like, it depends. Are you streaming the game from the laptop or are you, are, are you using the laptop as the medium to stream something else? Like say you're playing a game on your TV, yeah. you plug it into your laptop, your laptop just does all the broadcasting, and yeah, that's, that's uh, totally easy. fine. Yeah. Totally yeah. easy. So. Yeah. It makes it a lot less intensive on it so that the system yeah. itself doesn't have an issue. Yeah. So, okay, so uh, um. stuff I use is pretty much what Erica and uh, Daryl say. But it also depends too. For HD games with the HDMI cable <coughs> or composite, the HD PVR, really simplistic, plug it in and you just you can just record right off the bat. And streaming, like I said, you can only do it on the computer by plugging it into the computer and then going to the streaming setting, which I found, but never used because it didn't have my customization into it. It just has gameplay, camera, that was it. But yeah, that, that's an option there. For retro games, I use this thing called the Dazzle, because uh, uh, you know the red, white, yellow cable. Yeah, composite cable. I use that for retro games, and that one's easy to set up because OBS recognizes recognizes it, so I just display the footage on o OBS and stuff. There I go. I guess either record my game or stream the game. And, uh, a little more helpful information is you can get this at Best Buy. Yeah, that's one of the best. Or Amazon. Yeah, that too. Yeah. But you just match it at Best Buy from Amazon because <laughs> you can't do that. I have done that before. Yeah, but uh, you know, if, if you if you want to go through it locally, Best Buy. I would have said Future Shop, but that's gone. Yay! Okay, so 
When I tell you I would report stuff HTTP VR for HD game, HDMI games, Dazzle for the component. Kit. Composite. 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 Composite or component, either way you can still. Okay, composite like recording. And then like for streaming, OBS. Because um, it's the, compared to XSplit, which is actually uh, limited while it is free, you can't get the higher functions without like paying money for it. And I'm just like, I'm not, no, I'm not no. going to pay for that. And that's, OBS, that's why OBS is so low. OBS lets you do everything and anything as long as you know the code to um, put it in and then all the functions uh, you want in it, like uh, maybe a camera screen, like the scenes you were talking about, camera or just like just the camera, then gameplay footage that you can switch to, and all this other like neat junk that you can work with. It takes a little while, it's, it's not too difficult to learn. There's, there's tons of sources out there, there's forums and YouTube channels and all that. So what was, sorry, what was your question? Oh, my question was, um, how important is editing and how long do you usually take to like make a single video, I guess? Very important. Yeah, the, edit, the editing is like the backbone. I, I keep telling people it's like 10 or 15% uh, shooting, 75% or more editing. People don't seem to realize, like, and, and I see this with like this day and age where people see somebody with a camera and they're just like taking, they're either a photographer or they're a videographer and they're like, oh yeah, I can do that. And they don't see the other majority part of the work where they sit down and have to shorten it down, condense it into something that's more consumable, something that doesn't have a lot of dense base in it where no one's talking or has irrelevant content or maybe something that they don't want to really hear. It's too or, controversial. Or they don't know the planning behind the scene. Like, yeah. for instance, like uh, you see the finished product and you look at it, you're like, oh, I can probably do that. What you, what like viewers probably don't realize is like uh, they had to think like, oh, what did we want to capture? What did we want to get? It's like it takes a long while, but people are watching. They see the final product. Like, uh, say at a wedding, they take a picture of the bride. It's like, oh, well, that's easy. But it's like, while when it was being done, it was like, how do I do this? I gotta well, figure out my life balance. Like my, yeah, my white balance. Gotta figure out my levels. Gotta figure out if, it, if it's color corrected. Yeah, stuff, make, stuff like, like that. There's more. Posting the image. There's more behind it. So yeah. When you see people on the internet saying like, oh, I could easily do that. Unless they actually have like a portfolio of them doing that stuff, don't believe it. Yeah, there's a lot of pacing and structure involved with this. I find one of the easiest ways to get through an editing um, project like fast enough, like if I'm making like a really lengthy video about, I just recently did one on like um, my favorite atmospheres in horror games. A lot of times what I'll do um, is I will prepare ahead of time by creating a loose script, yeah. making bullet points and focusing on those per cut. So I will do a cut where I'm introducing a game and I'll do another cut where I'm talking about the game and then I'll use that as my uh, the audio overlay while I show the game, right? And then I'll do more of those and I will specifically have my cuts so that I already have a great day all set and then I can, you know, you it's, it's good if you leave a little bit of a pause in between each each cut just because you want it to sound like a person. You don't want it to sound like a robot or something. It's Already really monotone. To do that. Very monotone, right? So I think that's a really good way of being able to do so um, just because it kind of speeds up the process a bit and it helps um, encourage the idea of having a format, right? Um, maybe this is just from working as a journalist and thinking, you know, by paragraph, okay, these are the things I want to do. Right. I like to separate that sort of stuff. Um, so quest. Makes, yeah, it, it makes a huge difference if you can just separate your cuts like that. It saves you a lot of time. I personally use Premiere Pro. I love it. Um, I find that it does have a bit of a learning curve. It's at the same time, it, it, it's a lot more accessible than people might make it out to be. But there's a lot to learn in the midst of all that too. So you really love about Adobe programs in particular is if you know one. You can pretty much make your way around most of them because yeah. like, I, I went from knowing nothing about video editing to uh, like using from using Photoshop, InDesign, Dreamweaver, uh, Illustrator, and then I was like, okay, let's try Premiere, <coughs> and you can kind of have that slight familiarity of the layout. You can go, okay, no, this is probably where this is going to be, or like this is how like effects work, and you kind of feel really comfortable at that point. Well, it's kind of like when playing a video game, you you're like you've never played this game before, but you played a game that's like it. When you jump in, you're just like, oh, okay, there's these little like things. Yeah, it's it's 
Yeah, it's kind of like the mentality of, hey, look, I've played Chrono, but I haven't played Secret of Mana. It's like, okay, well, they're kind of similar styled RPGs. Slightly different ideas, but the same core element. Yeah, so it's like, oh, okay, so I'm in a familiar ground now. I kind of understand how to play this. You got to adapt to it. Uh, let's see, so video editing, how important is it? Well, video editing is like the puzzle piece of your video. Like, you've got, like, recording your footage. Like, that's the picture on the puzzle piece, right? So when you get to the editing, um, you just build that puzzle together and uh, make it look good. And there's many different ways that you can try and make it like a little bit easier on yourself. One thing I suggest that people do that I started doing really early on because I realized how easy this made my job. Record your audio and the video completely independently. Because what happens is if there's something in say the game, the footage that you're doing that's way too loud in the background, then it becomes very difficult to lower that thing's volume and increase your voice as well. Whereas if they're uh, put in something like uh, Audacity is actually what I use. If oh yeah, free yeah. software. We, the, one of the things you'll notice is a lot of content creators we use free software. We're just like everybody else. We try and save a few. Cool. Yeah, we're trying to save a few bucks here and there so that we can pour it back into <coughs> other things like purchasing more games for more content kind of idea. Um, but yeah, if you if you have your audio separate, you can gauge that on its own, and then you have your your video footage separate. You can gauge that on its own. That works a lot easier. Well, you see, that, that depends, like, uh, you're talking about, like, for a Let's Play, right, or a um, review? E even if you're doing a review, because I noticed that, like, there's various different formats for reviews. Some people will actually talk over the audio of the game while they're doing it, whereas I know that your format is you record the footage first, and then you talk, like, kind of like an, almost like a interview style, different, like, uh, like which video? This is like the from just like briefly looking through like you you kind of like you go like back and forth like I'm thinking like EVG head as well right like he'll go and he'll play the game but he'll, he'll like have the footage recorded and it's right there but he'll like talk over it right Some, something, something like that I, I have three things I got video footage my narration during the video footage and the live action footage where it's just like yeah on camera but the you know everyone has their own way of doing things the way I do my thing is uh, when I record the game footage. I don't really record the audio because you know the whole thing on YouTube of copyright, like, oh, yeah. compu uh, I hear this music, copyright, copyright, and I'm just like, I'm just like yeah. Yeah. so then I just cut, cut the audio completely and put my own music over it, yeah. so if I ever come back to editing it, I can just be in there like, no, copyright that, it's like, no, no music, copyright that, no. That's why I just grabbed the... Um the image, not the audio file, and I work with different musicians on Bandcamp, ask for permission to use their music, and it's a great way to, or, to work together with them. Yeah. Or you can and always use like a... That. But that's just like one thing. I know that I know YouTube, YouTube also has a music. library. Yeah, oh yeah, that's true. That, yeah, that's royalty free. Like audio, um, there's, there's plenty of things like that. One thing that I've also started to notice, which I'm getting really happy to see, is there's actually a lot of YouTube audio artists out there. One I actually follow his work, his name is Technoax, and he actually releases all of his work uh, royalty free. Like he says, as long as you put the credit at the bottom of your description, you can use all of my music, or at least like this massive library that he has, for free in your videos. So that's like, no, that's, that's really cool. That's it, awesome. Because it promotes them, and right. you don't get copyrighted for it. Fun. And then there's also other people who've been around for forever, like Kevin McLeod, who's got like, uh, what, what, what's, what, what is, what's his thing he had? Com yeah, so it's, in, in contact was like one of the first things that was out there, and then a lot more people realized that this is the way to go with their audio, because now they're getting exposure, the, the content creators getting exposure, it's everyone sharing everything at this point. Oh yeah, so going back to the audio, uh, the other reason I cut out the audio is because when I'm flipping footage, imagine, imagine if like, one footage was playing a music piece, but then it, like when I cut to another one, the music just suddenly stopped. It just feels very disjointed. So when the audio is all cut out and you just hear my narration and music playing over it, it's all very, very consistent. But the footage, you can understand. Maybe I'm showing a point. Maybe I'm just showing basic gameplay or making a point. Either one of those two. So that's why I cut my audio out and the point of the YouTube channel. Any other questions? Right, go right ahead. So for like a five or ten minute video, how much time do you uh, for a five minute video, probably like for me on average between 30 and 60 minutes, depending on how complex the five minute video is. Like if it's just, if it's just like a, a one shot of somebody sitting in a chair and just like explaining something like an announcement video, that'll take them like less than 30 minutes to edit. 
or if it, it's this intricate, like several layered thing where they have like tons of stuff coming up on screen, uh, possibly text or some audio fade in and fade out. It's like that'll take maybe yeah, about 45 or 60 minutes. It's how much work you put into it. Yeah. So, uh, you know those wheel outs that are really long? Would you say, like, and it's just someone talking, like, while sitting, like, about a subject? Would you say that's really complex? Uh, no, not really. I, but as, a, as a vlogger, it's really easy to edit. Yeah, yeah. So, but let's, uh, let's switch that. Let's say that vlog was 48 minutes, and then you switch that to a movie, and you know, it has, like, well, I don't know, Michael Bay, all these effects. Obviously, that, there, a lot of stuff went into that. So, yeah. ask you the whole time. Like uh, how much time or effort you put into it, it varies between. So uh, I was just gonna say, like, if I'm doing, because I like, like I said, I like to do scripting, uh, and that also keeps things really snappy too. So I could be doing a review in in-depth because I already know how I want this all to be planned out. I can do that within five minutes and be able to say everything I want to say. So I was actually gonna say, like, it takes me about four hours because it's like one hour to brainstorm and figure out what I want to say and then another hour for the filming, and then about another hour for editing, sometimes a little bit longer to be able the to more get, complex it gets. Yeah, and using transitions and everything, and making sure that everything fits together, and then exporting and uploading. Oh, jeez. That part you could technically consider around another hour or so. Oh, jeez. The part where you have to watch your video again, even though throughout the entire editing process you have been watching More it than once. Yeah, 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 just to make sure nothing happens like that. Uh, Misinformation or like the or like the screen yeah. something blacks out and you're like what? On that note, as as content creators, I think we can all agree. Before you upload a video, watch it in full before you throw it up there because I cannot count the number of times I've uploaded a video, did not make it go live yet, and realized there is an error somewhere. Like you said, like I've had blackouts in the, in the footage where it's like audio still going, image goes missing. Or like the audio, like the music in the background, it's like da 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 da, da. cuts. Something's missing, or like you, you didn't credit someone. Yeah, and it's be like... very thorough about that sort of stuff. Always watch before you export. It's yes, and before you export, it's probably the best time. Yes. Also, also, I would highly recommend like after you finish editing, like you render it, leave like your workstation for like a day, or at least a, if you're impatient, like a couple of hours, come back with a fresh mind and be like, okay, let's see if anything's wrong. And you detect, because yeah. while you're working, your mind is in that state where it's like everything sounds like a good idea, but then when it comes out and you come back with the same mind, it's like, uh, yeah. what was I think? Because one time I was, I was recording myself live action for a video and I was really sleep deprived. I was like, so hey guys, all this stuff and we're talking about this game. It sounded like a good idea in my head at the time, but when I looked at the footage again when I was awake, I was like, delete. <laughs> oh my god, is yeah. that me? So, so, going back to your question about the process of uh, doing a video, like I said, it depends on who, but the way I do it, I write a, I, I pick, a, I pick like, uh, for the video game review, I pick a game, I play the game, uh, usually all the way through, so that takes a couple of hours, because i got to beat the game fully to get, like, to get a... Uh, I'm biased for you because like, I played the whole game, so now I have a full opinion of the game. And then I write the script for it. Sometimes it goes really well, sometimes it takes a while because it's like, oh, how do I talk about this part? What should I talk about? What do I not need to put in that's like not important? Like, do I talk about the controls? Oh, no, that's dumb. Like, if it's a platform where everybody knows the B button to jump, I don't have to be like, oh, you press the B button to jump. Who cares about that? So, write the script. And let's see. And if I wrote any like thing like for live action, record that. Sometimes um, if I don't blooper myself or you know I flub over a line I wrote or like I forgot a line, usually it takes a very short amount of time. I'm kind of, I'm kind of quick on that. Then you bring it in. Then you go into the editing, and the editing part is uh, really fun. And and it's not that long if you have a script, but then you know like okay, I need to grab this, do this, do that, and then just put it all together. Also, then there's the audio recording, which takes quite a bit because I'm kind of really a perfectionist about it. Because if something doesn't sound right, I delete the entire line and just like re-record it. It was that was what was happening with me when I was recording uh, uh, recording my lines for uh, this review, Battle Cold Genesis. It took a long it took a long time, but like I finally got that done. So edit it. <laughs> Did, Did you beat it? Oh yeah. It was worse than the original. Oh, God. I have the review online if you ever uh, are 
If anyone is out of this one up right now. It's already been up like since last uh, three weeks ago. Okay. Uh, yes, someone just started it. My uh, buddy Mini Ninjas from I am Mini Ninjas dot com. She was pointing. <coughs> But yeah, so then go through the process of after rendering it, you gotta check it again just to make sure nothing goes wrong, and then you can be happy and satisfied with what you've done. So process varies is basically it. Well, it looks like we got what, 10 more minutes. I'll take this question here. So, can you name a couple channels that you guys subscribe to? And if I was to create a channel today, what type of content would I need to make to get you to subscribe to it? I feel like literally the best answer to that question is. Do whatever you enjoy, because one thing that I've noticed, even though I'm like probably the smallest channel on this panel right now, which I have no problem being, is I've now had the the honor and privilege to be, you know, being under the tutelage of so many amazing people. If you play something you really enjoy, or just do any content you really enjoy, people feed off of that. There's nothing more infectious than a good than, than being genuine and being in a good mood. Uh, to give you an example, if you ever see a video where someone is genuinely pissed off or not pleased with what they're creating, most of the time, people will click off of that video. Because like, they find it funny, because on one hand, or like they agree with it. Yeah, it's like either either they're like, they're really into that kind of thing, which it's kind of a smaller market, or they're like, eh, this person's not really enjoyable to watch. But if you go and watch people like, say, CNNers or Markiplier or, uh, or what, what the, Team Edge, or like basically a whole bunch of these really like high tier YouTubers, one thing that they all have in common, they're almost always smiling. I say almost because like I'm remembering Markiplier's like, <laughs> I am red LP. And, and, Sometimes those crazy <laughs> moments are great. I think it's about passion. That's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's also another thing. Universal passion. Passion can come from sometimes a negative space. Sometimes it can come from a positive space. So it's a I better like word to, to use. That. Yeah, I don't know. Like, if you feel like you have an expertise in something, if you feel like you have a particular amount of knowledge in something, that's something that's really important to tap into. Um, I know that for myself, I'm a sucker for hidden gems on various systems. I like to promote that kind of stuff. The lesser known. Also with JRPGs, I have pretty wide knowledge of JRPGs, so I like to talk about it. I may not know everything, but that's also what the comments are for, is so we can sort of embrace that and engage together. I think it's really important that when you're making videos is to encourage your um, you know, people who are watching to engage and to comment. I have a lot of times now with my community, um, I have uh, just under 24,000 subscribers right now. And I have this community that's positive, they talk together, and they become friends with each other, and I love that. I think that's great. And since like being on Twitch, they kind of carried over, and it's like this really nice, positive community. And I just, I love that, because it's, I want that kind of conversation. And if you, if you can like um, show that passion, that genuine feeling that you, you want to share with everybody, people will notice that, you know? Um, I think it's very important to watch other uh, video just to get an idea, inspiration. One of my favorite books is Steal Like an Artist. It's a really great book that talks about how imitation is very much like, you know, there's a very negative connotation when it comes to mimicry or anything like that, but I find that it is a part of what creates that base for you. And that's also something that can help create your own style, right? And I think that there's a way of transcending that sense of imitation, imitation or mimicry. Um, I feel like it just kind of feeds into more ideas and more inspiration. So if there are any particular video producers you like, continue watching them, maybe branch off into even more and see what they all do to give you more ideas to make it all your own. Right? You can make it all your own and just be you. I think that's like one of the most important things. Just to kind of like elaborate on that thing, you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's basically like, first of all, I'm going to say, yeah, I think like that we're better to find something you're passionate about rather than something you enjoy. Right? Like, that's, you know, that's kind of following the line. Almost. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is, yeah, find someone you aspire to, to be like, like as far as content is concerned and like watch kind of things that they do, stuff that they try to avoid, and try to understand it's not why. It's not right? So it's like if, if you see that they're like avoiding things, that one of the things that I avoid purposefully is YouTube drama. I'm not interested in it, and I've actually gotten comments on it about uh, like uh, I did a panel at Anime North this past year, and since so it's what do you think about the YouTube drama, and I say I just stay away from it. Because I, I don't care for that side of YouTube. I, I focus on being positive and I focus on my content and my colleagues' content and trying to better ourselves. 
is it worrying about stuff that stuff like that's really so bad. trivial in the end that really means almost nothing? Although some people will like ride on that and just be like, uh, just a game. Say, yeah. just like, oh, yeah. it's a hot topic. We better do the it. The thing is, is that's a really good way of getting like a, a short-term audience. You're gonna get yeah, people yeah, yeah. who want to feed into that, but they'll really quickly disappear. A lot of times, I feel like the channels like that, unless you're like really, really big or something, I feel like that's a really good way of people just sort of like coming, coming and going, which is not what you want. You want people to stick around, right? Yeah. yeah. So like. Uh, <laughs> For, for videos, obviously, do what you want because if you hate what you're doing, it will really show because uh, your viewers will catch subtleties that uh, even you aren't aware of. And another thing is be consistent because when you're making content, uh, you want to be consistent in it so that, say, you do a video once a week, like on Friday, so they watch it. It's like, oh, next week, next Friday, there'll be something. Okay, I'll come back and see what he does. Uh, that's better than say like you know like say for instance like you just do a video once a month and then it was like for some ex amount of like months later you then do another video like are you gonna like follow someone like that like they may they might do a good video but they're so inconsistent that it's just like oh yeah I kind of forgot about that guy I, I feel like that's my biggest issue right now cause, same here because like right now um, <laughs> boy am I sleep deprived I had to edit. 37 videos in four days to make sure that the vlog work that I had was caught up to yesterday. Oh man, I was up until 4.30 in the morning and had to be here for eight. Uh, I'm surprised you don't have a laptop that you bring with you. Today. Oh no, no, it's, it's, it's in the artist alley with my screen right now. It's, it's here. So yeah, it, one thing I'll say is that yeah, I will wholeheartedly agree consistency, whether you're doing a Twitch stream or YouTube channel, have a consistent schedule. You don't need of to do some sort. Yeah, you don't need to be absolutely nuts and go one day to a day that's not necessary. That not really burn you out. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure on the team. I'm feeling the burnout right now, right, as a matter of fact, because like I, I do daily video blogs and then about two to three videos a week for, for gaming content and then three streams a week. Uh, plus a part-time job. Yeah, well that's how a lot of us have to do, we have to juggle so much, like I work at a retro video game store in the city, I see games with this guy, and, and uh, yeah, and, and I find that that's a really good opportunity to kind of feed into the idea of like the things I want to talk about just by talking to people about their memories. Being nostalgic at heart, it's just like, it's kind of like an ever-flowing thing and it creates inspiration after, but that's still a job. It's like you go to work, and then you go home, and you do more work, and then you sleep, and maybe play a little bit of video games, but it might be work, and then you wake up in the morning, and you work, and then you go to work, and then you work again, you know? Why can't that be called working out? But it's fun, and that's the other thing, is if you're doing fun work, sometimes you forget that it's work, so that's a really good way of burning out. I've burned yeah. out like twice now on my channel, and I've, uh, I've had to take long breaks. It's, it's so stereotypical. It's tricky. It, it's, it's so, like, cliche, but I feel like it's the best way of explaining it. If you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. If you honestly and genuinely enjoy whatever you are doing, whether that's making videos, or if you're working in a, a specific location, or, like, whatever it happens to be, if you're enjoying that, you don't have to sit there and go, ugh, I gotta get up in the morning and then go to this thing. It's like, oh, cool, I get to do this now. Like you, you mentioned, appreciate. Yeah, like yeah, I, but take the time to be like, okay, I deserve a break. You yeah. know, I'm not gonna work all the time just because this is fun, right? Okay, okay. So there's one thing. Too much of anything is bad, yeah. including a job that's too fun. But then it'll just come back. Everyone but, uh, one, one, one thing I'll say is just be yourself, because um, that's what makes you you. That's what makes you different from everyone else. Is just be yourself. So, hey, maybe you, you hate on a really popular game because uh, you just really don't like those. Just say it. You don't like it. You really like this game despite other people not really liking it. Just, just like it. Because that, that makes you you. That makes you unique among everyone else. You ever watch those YouTube videos that are like, it, you, like people that are doing the video feel very fakey. Like they're kind of putting on a facade like, uh, oh yeah, this game is super awesome stuff and I think everyone should get it. Or it's like, oh, this game is just... I think we've all been like guilty of that. Like, no, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I definitely I Undertale is what did it for me. People saw right through it. 
like on the, on the genocide run, like people just saw us like, I was not enjoying myself. I got about three quarters of the way through and I was just like, I can't do this. I can't kill any more of these. No, I was just like, I wasn't having fun because it's like, I was I was so like engrossed from like doing the, the pacifist run because like it was just, it's so much more engaging. And then you just do like the genocide run and it's like, how? Oh, look, this just happened and it was quick. Uh, we're gonna have to tie this up because we got like two minutes left and we need to let the other people kind of come in right now. But I will say it'll make a little bit Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for coming to this panel. If you have any other questions, I'm sure you can ask us like, off the floor, yeah, too. I'll, I'll be in the artist alley at table 18. I sell a bunch of like video game-related curler artwork. Oh, yeah, I saw your work. I have some posters. I'm here at table 40. Um, I'm just going to hang out there. We'll see. <laughs> and if you guys want to see, I think we're, we're going to have another panel tomorrow morning at Oh, you're gonna be there. Okay, yeah, we're gonna meet and greet. Okay, so no, 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 no. The, the, there's the, there's the meet and greet, the content creator meet and greet. Oh. Yeah. Okay, it's a, it's cool. a panel ish cool. thing. And then I think that's gonna be more of what we've talked about today as well too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or something wait, like that. I'm not sure if I'm in that one. I know I'm in the obsessive gamer uh, one tomorrow. You might be in this one as well. I talked to you. Oh, okay. Thank oh. you so much, guys, yeah, for attending. I'll be around with some and just walking around. Probably at Joe Motif, uh, Motifi's table. Yeah. Okay, everyone here in this for Enemy Speech and wants to play, so that's it. talk to him for game tickets. Right in here? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to have it right now. I think it is. I don't know so I think yeah. I'm still in the process of it, so like I was supposed to leave in 30 minutes. So what we're going to do is...